Hey, Calvary by the Sea. Good to be with you this way. This is Pastor Moses Barrios, uh, pronouns he and el, and the senior pastor here at Calvary by the Sea. It is good to be with you uh, this morning, on um, this Friday morning. Uh, I really wanted to just connect with you about some really wonderful things happening on our campus over these next couple of weeks. And I thought I would start today by just acknowledging um, just the season we're in. Uh, certainly, there is a uh, there is the aftermath, shall we say, of the presidential election and its results. And I know that for many of our uh, people in our community, uh, I know that for some of you, um, it is a time of lament and a time of grief. And I hear you and I see you. And if that is you, by the way, please feel free to connect with me. Send me an email. Uh, give a call here at our church office and I would love to connect with you. Minister Grace would love to connect with you. So if that's you, please know that. Um, uh, as if you were here on Sunday, I preached about uh, the necessity to love, the necessity to love all ailing siblings and the necessity to be more engaged, more involved in these times. So if you're not part of an Ohana group, I would encourage you to join an Ohana group. Uh, you know, there's several ones around the island. So please, um, if you need to know where those are located and when they meet, you could contact the church office as well. So that's first. I just want to acknowledge that and, uh, and just be honest about that because I know that it's not uh, such a difficult time. It's a difficult time for many of us, but also um, I, I also mentioned how I am not lamenting uh, the winning party. I'm not lamenting the winning candidate. My lament stems from, uh, stems from love for humanity, love for people. And the reality is that many are willing to violate their morals, their ethics, their Christian beliefs uh, all in the name of fear, being overwhelmed by fear. And even logic and reason um, doesn't seem to uh, take precedence. So um, may we pray for those who we don't agree with. May we bless those that are our enemies, considered our enemies, because that is with the Jesus way. Jesus would call us to love no matter what. That is that holy ethic that um, that is just innately ingrained in us and we must we must tap into it in this season okay so announcements a couple of things going on firstly we are in the midst of uh, a series called love is the greatest and uh, minister grace will be preaching this sunday december um, november i'm already thinking about december november 17 and then november 24th i'll be wrapping up this series um, but I want us to be reminded that November 24th will be the Sunday we turn in our uh, generosity pledge cards. And um, let me see. Do I have one? Do I have? Maybe. Look, okay. Sorry for leaving the camera here. Look, I do have one. Okay. So this is a pledge card. And so this is um, the side we fill out. And then this is, uh, we tear this, right? And, and fill out this section to just remind us of what we are pledging and, and giving, and then we sort of tear it off. But I mentioned that, you know, really pledging to a congregation, giving financially to a church, uh, should stem from this understanding that there is a greater story being told by the Divine One, by God, and that we also have a love story, right? Right? Can I get an amen? And so our love story is uh, in in relationship, in connection, in partnership with God's love story. And so if when we give to the church, when we sign up to pledge, that is what we're doing. We're signing up to say this is how we see the world and how God sees the world. And we believe that we want to join that. And so that's why we join our love stories with God's love story. And then I mentioned that the church is perhaps one of the greatest signs of God's love in the world today. So um, if you have not filled one of, the, one of these out, if you have not received one, please contact yours at the office. Uh, if not, you could also um, pick one up on Sunday during worship. 
and just prayfully think about this, uh, consider it how you can financially uh, participate in the ongoing renewal and liberation and healing of this world. Wow, like that's powerful, right? That the church can be that in 2024. And I strongly believe it, I really do. I believe that in this time, next year, the church is more than ever called to be a, a beacon of hope, a beacon of light, a symbol, shall we say, a sign of God's love in the world. Uh, we cannot operate how the rest of the world operates. We cannot be transactional people where we just kind of in and out and go do our thing. And this is not Target. This is not your dentist's office. This is not, you know, uh, Walmart. What is another place you go a lot to? I, I, your grocery stores, like, you don't just go in and out. You don't just do something transactionally in the church. The church is one of the last spaces where we get to linger, where we get to stay and not seek to just do a transactional thing, but instead connect, be in relationship with others. So this is the season for that. So November 24th, bring your pledge card, your generosity pledge card, and then guess what? We will be praying for all generosity cards. Now, if you're not going to be here, you can certainly take a picture of this, email it to info at calvarybythesea.org. You can also bring it this Sunday if you needed to and you can't be there. You could do all of that so that we can pray for all of those pledge cards together. Another thing happening that's so beautiful. We are upon Advent. But before I go there, November 26, a Tuesday night, we have an ecumenical Thanksgiving service. So if you're into that kind of thing, um, and by the way, by no means are we saying that we um, have forgotten the genocide that has happened, that is, uh, uh, that happened to native peoples of this, of our, of our country. In no way do we ignore that history, by the way. But in this service, what we attempt to do is to reconcile that relationship uh, with our indigenous uh, siblings. So um, no November 26th will be an ecumenical Thanksgiving service that will center on reconciliation. It will center on acknowledging the lament and pain of our history while also recognizing there is a creator who is with us and, and cares for us and provides for us still today. So there's this uh, joy and yet this lament in this worship service. Our choir will be singing, an ecumenical choir will be singing. Uh, there'll be many clergies. I think we have like seven clergy or eight clergy and, and seven, eight churches. So it's going to be a wonderful time. We got different speakers coming in. So it's going to be a really, really wonderful time. And I believe that's happening at 6 p.m. Tuesday, November 26. The other thing you must know is that on uh, December 1st is the first Sunday of Advent. Can you believe Advent is here? So in this season of Advent, this season of anticipation, this season of knowing that something is coming, right? Um, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, right? Like this is um, the season that we get to light candles. So we are lighting the first Advent candle on December 1st and then so on. And so you don't want to miss that. You want to be part of that. It's different people will be lighting candles and sharing some thoughts. We'll be highlighting some of our partnerships and how we give away our financials and our monies every year to different organizations and uh, causes. So you want to be part of that. Um, the other thing that's really cool is Advent devotionals. That happens on Wednesdays. And we are uh, going to start that. I think it's the first Wednesday is December 4th. So stay tuned for more details coming out of that. That'll be a Wednesday evening, um, a whole church-wide uh, kind of gathering. And so we'll be inviting our children. There'll be stuff for our children and youth and adults. And it'll be a beautiful time together. And we only get three Wednesdays this year because of the calendar. So um, three Wednesdays we'll gather for these Advent devotionals. Uh, also, uh, after that, I want to make sure you understand December 8th is a Sunday. But that's also Marathon, Honolulu Marathon Sunday, which means the marathon goes right in front of our church. And therefore, we cannot have worship on that Sunday morning. So hear me when I say, do not come to Sunday morning worship on December 8th. We'll be having worship in the evening. 
And I believe that service will be at 5.30 p.m. December 8th. So a change up, okay? And so uh, please be aware of this uh, scheduling change for Calvary by the Sea and our worship experience. Um, and then one more thing to mention, December 7th is a Saturday. It's the Saturday before the 8th, uh, obviously. Uh, that Saturday, there will be a parents' night out and our children's director, Anuhea, will be uh, taking care and watching over all ages. I believe, I think, I'm not sure if birth and up, but certainly like two years and up or something like that. And there'll be more details coming out. And she will be um, providing all parents, like listen up parents, like I don't know where you're going to find this. She's going to take care of your children and um, there'll be other volunteers helping her. Thank God. Thanks be to God for that. Um, they will all be there to provide free care for your children so that you, parents, can go out. I don't know, like maybe it's a nice dinner, right? Maybe it's a walk, you know, down the beach and watch the sunset. Ooh, like now I'm getting romantic, guys. I'm giving you guys really good uh, ideas. No, I'm just kidding. But just the time, maybe it's just hang out. Maybe it's just we want to go home and just hang out and watch television or something on a Friday, on a Saturday night. Whatever it is, um, I would take advantage of it because I think it'll be healthy and good for you and your partner to find some time alone uh, and let the kids be kids with Anuhea and, and the people who are professionals at that too. So that's happening as well. Uh, I think I'll stop there. There's so much goodness coming, so much beautiful things happening. It is a season that we get to be in community. This excites me. Like the fact that, um, that we get to intentionally be together more um, through devotionals, through Ohana groups, through different events and gatherings. It's like, yes, like that's the reason why... The church exists, friends, right? To be in community with one another, to laugh together, to um, just have fun together, to worship together, like just to learn together. It's a good thing for the church to be alive. Can I get an amen? Like that's, that's where we're at today. And I just want to encourage you, you know, whatever it is that is, is, is maybe holding you down, you know, I think of, of the struggle, right? There is a struggle. There is a financial struggle. There is a working class struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like there are so many people who are living paycheck to paycheck who uh, are not being paid enough to make a decent living in this country. Like there's real, real needs, real um, um, stress, right? Like let's be let's be clear about that. But how do we alleviate such things, friends? How do we alleviate such pain, such suffering? Like, see, I, I think one way to alleviate that, one way to fight back is to be in community with one another. For when we are in conversation, in connection, for when we are in relationship, when we are in prayer together, it seems to begin to heal our souls. It begins to heal our minds. And somehow things begin to look a lot brighter. I will be see, I'll be seeing some of you at the retreat uh, to, tomorrow. Saturday um, if you will be if you if you still want to come you can still make it uh, we begin at 9 with some coffee at 9 30 and with registration and then at 9 30 the programming starts Pastor Bob um, from Kilohana United Methodist Church will be uh, our guest speaker and we'll have some songs and some yoga and some reflection time it really good programming by the way um, I think we already have like 30 or 40 of us signed up so you are welcome to come and be away in Kalihi Valley, the, one of the, some of the most lush uh, jungles that I've seen here in Hawaii. And it's a beautiful space. So if you want to make it out tomorrow, Saturday, to the retreat for adults, 
by all means, come be part of it.